would you choose if you wanted to be remembered for over 600 years? Would it be fine houses in Norwich or London? Or would it be estates all over Norfolk and Suffolk with sheep and cattle, crops and timber? Or would it be just paper, plain paper, paper letters? 600 years ago, an ordinary family of farmers with one small farm in the village of Paston on the Norfolk coast began an extraordinary rise to power, fame and fortune. The family wrote letters to each other because the men of the family had to go to court to serve the king. Lots of kings and queens actually, because this was a time of war in England and the Pastons had to fight. This is a letter from Princess Elizabeth to young John Paston asking him to let her use his lodging whilst she is at court. Imagine a farmer's son from Norfolk in court. Master Paston, I pray you that it may please you to leave your lodging for three or four days till I may be purveyed of another, and I shall do as much for your pleasure. For God's sake, say me not nay, and I pray you recommend me to the Lord Chamberlain, your friend Elizabeth. From the 15th century there are hundreds of letters. At one time they had all been kept in the muniment room, the records room, at the Paston's great house at Oxnead. Fortunately, in the spring of 1735, the famous Norfolk historian Francis Bloomfield secured permission to spend two weeks in that muniment room in the dilapidated hall. He discovers several sacks, sacks full of Paston correspondence, letters to and from members of the family, letters to and from their servants. He must have been amazed. Three years later, Francis Bloomfield had catalogued and marked the documents he had found. When he died in 1752, his widow called on another antiquary, a historian with a special interest in old documents, Honest Tom Martin, to help sort out all his papers. By 1755, Martin had bought the whole collection. He had a neighbour, John Fenn, the next person in the story, and a very important one. John Fenn had recently been at Gonville and Keyes Hall, part of Cambridge University. The collection passed to Fenn, and he also got more Paston letters from other sources. John Fenn told Horace Walpole, son of Prime Minister Robert Walpole, about the letters. Horace said they were the most curious papers of the sort I ever saw. He told John Fenn they ought to be printed in a book. So Fenn sorted them all out ready for printing. He even developed a special sort of type that looked like the original writing. He persuaded King George III to allow the first volume to be dedicated to him, and so the letters could now be bought as books. The first edition soon ran out because so many people bought copies, and so they had to print another lot. Another historian, James Gardner, worked on the papers at the beginning of the 20th century, finding more letters, and he produced a further set of books. And ever since then, historians have discovered more and more fascinating details about the letters. They have been linked together with all sorts of events in history. They've been used on radio and in television programmes. The British Library has put copies on the web and this project is aiming to go another step forward with a 600-year-old story. <laughs>